Hi Calvin, this is Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskGM.com and I will be analyzing your game today. So let's take a look. After the move d4, knight f6, your opponent played a very rare continuation, this move knight d2. This is actually a very tricky line because now you cannot play e6, which how we would normally answer against knight f3. If you want to try to play for Bogo Indian with bishop b4 check, for instance, or if he plays the London system, right, then you may play for b6 plan. So knight d2 is really the idea to confuse you, and you actually played extremely solid and not a bad move at all, the move d5. However, if you want to play for advantage or try to mix things up, I would recommend this move c5. It turns out that this knight is actually misplaced. There is no d5 because, well, simply you're going to win the pawn. And both e3 or c3 will simply give you a good game. Now you can simply play e6 and transpose two lines that we typically get in the black book, chess openings for black explain. Same thing if white plays c3, you get to play e6, very easy game. Or if you want to be a little bit more ambitious, because after e6 you may play e4, and you don't want to allow that, you may actually play the move d6 or queen c7, followed by the fianchetto of the bishop. Again, you're going to sur surrender the center, but because the knight is on d2, it's actually blocking the bishop. So surrendering the center is totally not a big deal. Another ambitious decision is to play d5. And if he takes, play for e5. Yes, you are sacrificing the pawn, but then you get the massive pawn center. And I actually think you have full compensation. You may undermine the pawns with a5. So again, this is all if you're trying to play for a win. Now, the move that you played is not bad at all. So let's go back to the game. And you played the move d5. So white just plays very simple chess, e3, e6, bishop d3, c5. I really love this idea c5, by the way, trying to challenge the center. And this is a coalie system with the bishop on c1. It's not supposed to be dangerous for black at all. You decided to fanchero the bishop, and I don't see anything wrong with this plan at all. Of course, there's more than one setup. You can also play knight c6, knight f3, followed by bishop d6, castles, castles, and this is totally fine. Your long-term plan is to push the e-pawn. Again, this bishop is passive. White doesn't really have any advantage. But as the opening goes, it really is a matter of taste. There's more than one good move. And going back to the game, b6 is absolutely fine. You take care of the bishop. And the very important thing to remember, the bishop, the pawn, the knight. This is a very powerful combination. If white ever tries to play knight e5 f4, this is the typical attack and setup, then you will always be able to reply to that with the move knight e4, blocking this bishop and not getting white any attack. So as the game continued, bishop e7 is actually the right decision because the bishop on d6, if he ever plays knight e5, well, you simply you know, for instance, your knight's here, you never want to take it because he's going to take with the with the pawn and creating the fork. So I don't like that. Bishop on e7 is more flexible and you have a very simple position. So let's keep going. This is all pretty much equal. You could take on e4 or as I like knight bd7, be more flexible. The equality is pretty much in all of these variations. And what can I say? You've equalized with black. That's, you know, part of the goal in the opening. Now, the question is, could you have squeezed something more than just the quality out of this? I like the move knight of six hitting the queen. Queen e2. White is extremely solid, but you correctly play queen c7 to try to organize counterplay. Bishop g5, knight d5. Again, this move is, if you want a quality, completely fine move. But if you want something more, 
I would keep the tension by playing the move rook to d8. He's probably going to play rook d1, and now you have a few options. You can again keep the tension by playing rook c8 and having an option to play knight d5 in the future. Some people actually may play c4, followed by knight d5, and do the queen push, queenside pawn push. In that case, the rook on c8 is irrelevant, and you could probably start with the queenside pawn push right away. Again, many different ideas, depending on how you feel you want to play this position, you have a lot of options. But knight d5 is absolutely fine, black is totally solid, and here you actually get a slight edge after the move rook d2. I really like how you follow it through. After pawn takes, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, queen takes, it looks as though the game is that equal, but not quite. You have the only trump in the position, which is the open d file. And there is not much he can do about it. So he has to defend accurately. h6 is an excellent idea. We don't want to get any back rank mates in the future. He plays f3. Okay, logical as well. Queen c4, a nice tempo move in the pawn. Of course, there is more than one plan. Another idea here is to play rook d5, queen d7. So he can never ever think about trading the d file and then invading on d2 at the right moment. But you decided to play queen c4, which is fine. Queen d3, asking him to go to the rook and pawn endgame. Here, white already has to make very much the correct decision. Taking the queen would be a big mistake because after either c4 or rook c1, this guy is coming to, I meant to say rook c1, this guy is coming to rook d2, and this is a big liability, that pawn on a2, and this type of endgame is probably already lost. That's right, White, white's rook is so passive, and so is the king, that all it is, you're just gonna take your time, bring the king up to the center of the board, push all your pawns up, and then create a pass pawn and just win the game. So he actually has to make the only right decision, which is to defend with king f2. So white actually played that move, and that's why he's holding the fourth. Check, correct decision, rook e2, queen d1, you still win the d-file, but after c4, white has a fortress. Every single pawn is defended, and pretty much his whole king side is defended. Yes, you have an extra pawn on the king side, but because the queens are on the board, it's gonna be very difficult to push the pawns. I still prefer black. Queen d4 is basically a draw offer, because now he just trades everything on the d-file, and this king and pawn endgame is a draw, as you basically played out. There's really, neither side can win. But let me show you another chance to try to play for a win. Just keep the queen on d1, keep the rook on d8, and the pawn structure you're trying to aim for is h5 and g6. You might as well weaken up this h pawn with this tricky move queen d6 if you want. And after the move h3, you can play h5 followed by g6. And at some point, you may even have ideas like h4 and queen g3. So again, very slight edge for black, probably a draw with best play. But in this game, you were never at risk of losing. You played extremely solid. And if you want to play for a win, I showed you a few opportunities early on, such as the c5 move, and you will have a great initiative. This was Grandmaster Eugene Perlstein for AskGM.com. Goodbye.